Mark, welcome to the show. Really happy to have you on Seeking Alpha and CEO Interviews. Thank you for taking the time on this busy, busy day. Yeah, it's great being here. Thanks, Rena. So catch viewers up on exactly what Double Verify is bringing to the marketplace and why now was the time to IPO. Yeah, so uh, Double Verify is a software platform that helps advertisers really address two of the biggest secular issues with digital advertising today. Uh, the increasing preponderance of fraud in the digital transaction world um, and sensitivity around brand safety. So where my ads end up. And what we've seen is, you know, obviously most recently, um, brand safety has come to the forefront of a lot of the way advertisers think about their advertising, right? It's you know, where their ad shows up has become just as important as what their ad says. So, you know, when we look at emerging technologies like connected TV um, and the obviously, you know, challenging social environment that we're in today with lots of issues and lots of different pitfalls for advertisers. Um, both of those things have really driven our business and driven our business growth. So, uh, you know, it's really been a combination of success financially for the business. Last year, we did uh, $244 million of revenue with, uh, you know, over, you know, which is 34% growth year over year. That's a 30 and dropped 30% EBITDA margins to the bottom line. So we had great growth. Um, and that combined with the, 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 the kind of other outside issues that we mentioned before, so challenges around fraud and brand safety, really brought together these two kind of factors that made sense for us to, hey, this is a great time for us to continue to grow so that we can service our clients in a more aggressive way um, and take advantage of the momentum we have. So getting you know, additional capital to do that is, is really, um, will provide a, a supercharge for our business. And the other thing that you guys mentioned on, on one of the announcements was how the proceeds from the IPO will go to pay down debt. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and in terms of you speaking about the need for, for building capital, how that relates to the paying down of the debt? Yeah, so, so the nice part of where we sit, and I know this sounds crazy for a technology company, is we're actually profitable and we throw off cash. Right. So, uh, you know, we've got a pretty big line of credit. Um, and the reason we've taken that out is to, to provide flexibility as we want to grow and invest and look at potential acquisitions down the road. We've only drawn a small amount down on that line. So we'll pay that down just so that we're not carrying the overhead because we really don't need it. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to have as much dry powder from both you know, liquid capital in the form of cash and debt um, when we need it to continue to accelerate the growth of the business. So we see that as a, just another kind of arrow in our quiver of being able to you know, have lots of tools to grow the business. So when you talk about growing the business and accelerating and, and building on that momentum, what are some of the things that you're pointing to as markers that you want to hit? Yeah, you know, when you think about what we do, you know, Double Verify creates trust between buyers and sellers. And ad buyers buy everywhere. Right? They buy connected television, they buy video, they buy display, they buy lots of different types of ads. So the first thing that we need to do if we're going to be a great partner to a huge brand is to ensure that we're verifying everywhere, every different platform that they can buy against. And as you know, every day there's a new digital platform that's evolving, whether it's in the social front or connected television or audio or podcasting. There's always a new venue through which advertisers are looking to spend a dollar. So the first vector we really think about is kind of investment and growth is to make sure that we're covering every sector where an advertiser can spend their money. Uh, the second real area is thinking about as we grow globally and we work with bigger and bigger brands, it's important for us to continue to support them in global markets. So, you know, uh, last year, uh, we closed a, a large deal with Mondelez, who's one of the largest advertisers in India, for example. Um, we have a relationship with Yahoo Japan, um, which obviously you know, gave us a, a drive to, to build a Tokyo office. So as we close larger enterprise clients, our ability to support them globally is, is super important as well. So all of our growth is really driven by clients, and we've had great success bringing in big brands lately. And so from either covering more sectors and verifying more you know, transactions across every new media that comes out or ensuring that we're with them globally as they expand. Those are kind of some key areas that we're going to continue focusing growth on. And speaking of that, you know, expansion, I, I wanted to just mention to viewers that don't know what connected TV, connected TV is TV that's connected to the internet, um, the modern version of, of the television. 
I'm uh, curious as you grow through, you know, various parts of similar industries um, in the in this marketplace. What have you learned as the, the main kind of differences between traditional content viewing and, and what's happening right now and how that relates to advertising? Yeah, so you know, there's so many similarities, but also, you know, uniqueness to, to each platform. You know, the type of advertising and the type of engagement that consumers have on each platform is very different, right? A banner ad uh, that may get a, a second of, of airtime you know, with a consumer is very different than a full 30 second spot that runs on a connected TV app, right? So they're very different experiences um, with how users engage, um, what is considered viewable, right? So is an ad, if you remember the old days, you know, ads below the fold, you know, when someone loaded a page weren't considered viewable. Viewability in connected television is an ad that doesn't run longer than a quartile, just 25% of that ad. So there are different metrics but what's interesting is how certain aspects of the business are still the same. Fraud that we've seen in banner ads 10 years ago moved to mobile, and now it's in connected television. Same types of fraud schemes are out there. Viewability, as I noted, are, is still important, right? And whether it's where an ad sits or how long it plays, that's critically important. And brand safety, what's the context of where my advertising sits is still consistent whether it's a text ad or whether it's a, a video ad, that context is still relevant. So lots of consistencies, different ways consumers engage. And what's important for us is, is to ensure that we have a consistent way of measuring across all of those. And we have consistent standards for our advertisers across all those platforms too. And also talk about how that pertains to the movement to the cloud, which is, you know, happening faster and faster. And also as it relates specifically to social media, just, just on social media, not on connected TV. Yeah. So, you know, obviously movement to the cloud from our perspective as a company just makes it easier for us to provide service and solutions anywhere in the globe, right? We don't need to have local installs. We don't need to have, uh, you know, hardware on site, the ability to, the cloud just provides a massive amount of flexibility. And as our clients are increasingly global, the ability to service them seamlessly and in an agile way, the cloud delivers that to us. Um, on, the, on the other side, so, you know, shifting gears, talking about social, um, you know, look, social is obviously a, both a vector through which so many eyeballs end up, right? There's so much engagement and a lot of advertiser dollars follow there too. The challenges with social though are, you know, the management of what's being said there and how aligned that is with who a brand, you know, who a brand purports to be. So I think, you know, as we see social continue to grow in importance from an engagement perspective on the consumer side, it grows in importance from the advertiser side as well. Um, those challenges only get greater, right? So, you know, we saw, you know, we continue to see challenges with social issues and, and how they rise up in some of these platforms and controversial content, et cetera. All of those, you know, become, uh, you know, potential minefields for advertisers. And, and they really look to us to help them navigate through those through our software. Do you feel like, um, you know, businesses' main concerns at this point are more fraud um, based or do you feel like they're equally concerned about fraud and getting the engagement? What, what are businesses most concerned with and what are they approaching you with? Like, you got to help us. What do you hear most? Yeah. You know, if you think about it, it all boils down to outcomes. Advertisers mm -hmm. want to know if, if, you know, what is the outcome of me spending this impression? So all of those are factors. But if you take the first one out, fraud, if I don't know whether this is a valid impression or not, it screws up my whole denominator, right? My whole equation gets messed up because I don't know if I served a billion ads or 9 million ads that were valid, right? So all of those other things, engagement, viewability, et cetera, really become meaningless if I don't know if they went to a real person. Like that, that's, so that is kind of the, the first kind of level of, of, of issue here. After we kind of take care of that, which is, hey, is this legitimate? Am I spending my money to a real person? Then it's, okay, what happens after that? Where did it end up? How long did someone engage with it? Was it delivered in the right geography? All of those things then become important. So 
I wouldn't say one's more important than the other, but one is kind of table stakes to say like, hey, I want to at least make sure that I'm not wasting my money on something that's not going to a human being. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is, you know, COVID has affected, it's affected every industry, but I think certain industries differently. Like I would imagine your industry, it's almost benefited. And you guys, as you talked about, have had, you know, crazy amounts of growth this past year through the pandemic. Um, and I feel like as you, as you keep growing and as you talk about, you know, these changes to the marketplace and, and one of the things that's set to soar and, and do even greater business is the business of, of marketing analytics. I'm curious where you see the next year specifically going, what your thoughts are there, and then even beyond that, how big you see this getting and, and how much more you want to grow. Yeah, it's, it's a great point. So maybe kind of slice that into two pieces. When we look at last year, you know, we had a great growth rate in that year. And a lot of it was driven by the fact that, you know, so many eyeballs were still engaged with digital media. Those we believe are, you know, not cyclical issues. They're, they're secular changes in how people engage with digital media. That will continue to grow and provide tailwinds moving forward. And even if you look at, you know, our, our slowest quarter of growth last year was Q2. We still grew 22%. And where, why that's important is our advertisers see us as a utility, right? They, they use us on every impression. And even if the number of impressions go down that they spend, they don't turn it off. You know, it's like wearing a seatbelt. You don't decide like, hey, things look pretty light in traffic today. I'm not going to put that seatbelt on. You know, you just don't do it. So I think that's an important fact. And when we look at that moving forward, that utility would only become more important as digital growth continues as well. So as those habits have been changed on the connected television side, as people are spending more time in front of screens, that provides an impetus to us. And if you think about what we, where our real mission is, is to measure every impression across every platform in any media, in any market on the planet, right? So we've got a big, you know, a big nut to crack there. And you know, digital advertising globally is a $250 billion plus business, right? And, and, we want to analyze every one of those transactions. Do you feel like there's a difference between, the C between being the CEO of a public company and a private? I mean, I know there's technical differences, but as you approach the role, do you feel like there's a difference between being in a public company and a private company? Yeah, it's a great question. I've been on both sides of the coin here. So I've run private companies, I've run public companies before. Um, uh, particularly for a company like Double Verify, whose, whose real drive is to create transparency between buyers and sellers, I think the public market gives us an offer, opportunity to be transparent ourselves, transparent with our financials, being open as a company, but it also gives us a broader stage to drive awareness to. And I think that's super important for where we sit because um, ensuring that the broader ad community um, understands the challenges that are out there and how we can help solve them, I think being public gives us a, a really nice platform from which to, to talk about that. And you came on as CEO uh, last year, and this is going to be my last question. How do you feel, what do you feel like you're bringing to the role as CEO? What's your main driving ethos that you feel like you're bringing to being a leader of a company? Yeah. Look, the, the great part of, of joining a company like DV is that you know, I wouldn't have joined if they didn't have an amazing culture, and they mm -hmm. do. And, and, and a culture that aligned with who I was as a leader, which is focused on transparency and empowerment and continue to kind of drive success with accountability. So the first thing I'm bringing to the table is just don't screw anything up. This is a company that has amazing momentum, has a great team of people that, that lead it. Um, so for me, it's about taking that momentum. And the theme this year for our company is Accelerate. I'm here just to accelerate what's already been done. And that's what I look at my role doing is to take the amazing work, the great product, the incredible client relationships that we have and accelerate them to a new level. Well, Mark, I appreciate you taking the time. I'm happy for you to leave Seeking Alpha investors with any last words about Double Verify. Yeah, Double Verify uh, will be everywhere. We'll continue to grow. Um, and think of us as advertising security software. That's a utility for advertisers. And that's not, that is uh, taking advantage of, of a lot of secular changes in the space um, that we're going to help uh, advertisers navigate. Awesome. Thanks again, Mark. I really appreciate you taking the time. I hope we can connect down the line and catch up with what, where Double Verify is, what else you guys have, in, have going on in the market. But enjoy the day. Congratulations. Very 
very exciting entrance into the public markets. So thanks for taking the time. You got it. Thank you. Have a great one.